everybody how you doing Okay, just like on Sunday morning, you know, we, uh, we're very excited to be in the presence of God. And uh, so I know it's only Saturday night, Sunday's coming, all right? But we're going to uh, pre- preactively decree our excitement for what God's going to do tonight, okay? So, so let me ask you again, how you doing tonight? All right, it's getting better. How about you, online family? Maybe you got a, a lion roar inside of you. Let's try that one more time. How are you doing tonight, church? Wow, all right, it's getting better. This is awesome, it's getting better. If I ask you one more time, you guys all might fly, so we'll just stop right there for now. How many of you just been having such a blessed time with what God is doing in the house? And and you can say, man, you know what? I, I, I'm not leaving the same the way I came in. I, I've been, God has given me some revelation. He's, he's put something inside me. Papa, Father God loves me. How many of you could say that with a certainty? I know that I am loved. How about those greeters at the door? Welcome to chair number one tonight. Man, that's so good, team. Really quick before we get into worship, how about a round of applause for all of the worship team? Come on, how awesome is this? How about our media team? Thank you, God, for our wonderful media team who's working so hard. How about all these awesome ushers and greeters? Come on, let's bless them. All the office staff, let's bless them. Yeah, thank you, Lord. All those that handled registration. And how about giving God thanks for you? You, give thanks to God for you tonight. And now that we got all that out of the way, let's focus on him. Let's focus on our daddy. Let's focus on God. Would you stand to your feet and begin to just lift your praise? Don't be embarrassed of who's around you. Be excited because God is going to do something amazing in you tonight. Online family and those of you in the house, just lift your hands and say, God, I want to worship you tonight, Papa. I want to worship you tonight, Father. You know, there's a river flowing and there's an invitation to jump in, jump in, not just a little, not just some, but everything, jump in with everything you have, jump in, can you guys hear me okay, not really, hello, hello, hey Angela, turn me up, turn me up, turn me up, oh I don't know, I'm right. Lay, Leif, sorry, Leif, Leif, I'm wrecked. I'm telling you, I, I got wrecked at that one, the, at the 331, yeah, that one right there. And I've been wrecked. It's a good wreck. It's a good wreck. That's what I told Kay. I said, Kay, we're going to get wrecked this weekend. Wrecked, wrecked. I don't know about you, but I jumped in. I jumped in. Let's jump in the river tonight. There's a river, and we're going to jump in with everything we have. Amen? Come on. Drown sorrows there. 
Even in this atmosphere and environment, I just felt that there was also, there was healing in the river of love. And I just sense that. So even right now, as we're just in this presence, just put your hand on wherever you need in the body, if it is in your mind, but just put your, your head wherever you need a touch. But I just felt that it was just this river of love, but it was bringing healing to the sons and daughters because it is the Father's good pleasure. And there's healing in the covenant there's healing in the kingdom and there's healing in the precious blood of Jesus and I saw first of all the rotator cuff being healed of someone and I think it was on the left side and it was just being healed by the left side or it's also maybe a frozen shoulder connected to that on the left side I think it's two different people somebody else also with migraine headache you even have a headache right now but it's going to just be healed as you're getting into that river and then, well, we're seeing even on the left knee, and it is right here, there's like a sharp pain on the left knee. And, and I just, even at this very moment, it's being healed now in the name of Jesus. But I also saw that some of you have had these clouds, these dark clouds over you. And I just felt that it's like that when the river was coming in, the light just penetrated, it came through. And I just felt that he said, I'm healing hope. I'm healing hope for you. And it was almost like, wow. Even as the light came in, I just a hope came back because hope deferred had made your heart sick. But tonight you're going to start to desire again and you're going to dream again. And it's the tree of life. So Father, I just thank you for just loving on your family tonight. I thank you when you're looking at each one of these beautiful sons and daughters and you're looking at Jesus and you're saying to your son, well done, son, Jesus. Because even there at the cross, Jesus took your pain. He took that shoulder. He took migraine headache. He took that hernia. He took that cancer. He took Parkinson. He took cancer. On the cross, he's looking at his son. And when his son said, Papa, it is finished. It is paid for. You don't have to pay for it any longer. So I'm just releasing at this very moment. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be made whole, whoa, in the name of Jesus. I speak life, life, life in the name of Jesus. I release hope, hope, whoa, hope in the name of Jesus. Let a light, whoa, there it is. Penetrate through those dark, there it is, yeah, whoa. And I even said, say that what? There is oil of gladness that is about. The oil of gladness is about. It's just like a lifting the oppression. It is that wine of Pentecost that gives you the pleasure and the joy back. When did it stop? I just heard Papa say, when did it stop being fun? Whoa, when did it stop being fun? I just sensing that the childlikeness and the joy was coming back. His sons and daughter was almost like, wow, I'm getting fun again. Life is getting fun again. Getting up in the morning, wow, with that, that, that joy. And the joy is going to be your strength. So, Father, we just release it. The joy, the joy, the unspeakable joy. So, just starts to move with that wine, the Pentecost wine, that gives people the pleasure of Papa. Papa, pa, pa. yeah, there you are. There it is. Papa. Pa. Is that the childlikeness and the innocence being restored in the family? Just sense if you are sensing. I just, uh, just to notice, just wait. If you're sensing some healing took place either in your body or in your mind, and or perhaps even you sense that hope, that cloud, just wave. Well, if you're 80% or better, just wave. It's actually all over the place. Because are we, are we always were just looking, just... Yes, 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 all over the place. I do know that he is working when we are resting. And I just believe, in, I believe that it's such an atmosphere we can coming in where the immune system of the body. So even just say that if you still need healing, could you just raise up your hand? If you need healing. And the people around, just gently. I know COVID-19, let's be gentle and just 
But I want you just to release to the people and just even say, what would you like to do? So as we're in this place of worship, let the family come together. Let us carry one another's burden and let's just bless life. Nobody's going to have chronic pain throughout this. We're coming against that in the name of Jesus. There is truly a healing, um, a healing oil that is flowing in this place. And as um, Leif was sharing, I kept getting the scripture where Jesus said, healing is the what? It's the children's bread. It's the children's bread. It's not orphan's bread. It's children's bread. And I also was getting that some of you have had words proclaimed over you that have brought curse on your health. It might even be a doctor's diagnosis. And I believe that's being broken right now because Jesus said in John 6, 63, the words I speak are spirit and they are life. And I also believe that we're to cancel out damaging words um, that even have come from your own mind, your own thinking, the temptations of the enemy that you have agreed with, um, just negativity about yourself, negativity about your future. We just break the power of those words and any influence they have upon our body in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord God, that there's healing in this house. I see depression leaving in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that you are healing people and delivering them from depression and from um, things that have brought their, their uh, body into a heaviness, into a weakness, into fatigue. In Jesus' name, we just lift that off in Jesus' name. And we curse cancer in Jesus' name. We have the power because we're your children, Lord. We're your children. This is the children's bread. It is the children's bread. We thank you for miracles in the house tonight. Wow, test it out. Come on, test it out. There's, there's healing taking place in here. Some of you are feeling a shift in your emotions. I, I see um, people who have tension in the back of your neck. It's being loose. Just check it out. Move it around. Check out your knees. Bend over. Check out your backs. Check, you know, press in your abdomen to see if that pain is gone because God is moving in this place right now. Wow. How many of you feel something's happened? Come on forward. Come and testify what God's done. Come on. Hey, I'll just tell you right now, like I came in with a tense neck like stiff neck, right? And it's already getting loosened up. Now, why is that important, right? It's because we're just asking God to touch us. Come on, God is touching you tonight. So who else? Who else is receiving a manifestation? Let's, let's talk about our daddy tonight. Come on up, come on up, come on up. I've been in excruciating pain in my neck, in my shoulder, in my head all day and yesterday. And, um, no pain. It's gone. My head gone. Yeah. Come on. Come on. God's restoring your childlike faith. I hear that over you right now. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. I'm just saying to the enemy right now, witchcraft is breaking. Satanic ritual breaks is breaking. What did God do for you? There's been a lot of curses going. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Okay. It's just coming out. Well, you're getting freedom tonight in the name of Jesus. Come on. Somebody pray for her. Derek, could you pray for her? You're going to get some freedom. Let go over there to Derek and Veronica. They're going to pray for you. Come on up here. You prayed for a left rotator cuff? That was me. It's been harder than now. It feels great. So thank you. Yeah. That's awesome. Come on, man. How about you, online family? Make sure you're sending in your testimonies. Who else? Who else, family? Come on. Who else, family? Who else? Who else? Come here. Come here. Come here, run up here, run up here. Come on, don't be shy. Come on, let's let's brag about our daddy. Let's brag about our father in heaven. I was feeling a tightness in the middle of my back for a couple of, maybe a week, and it finally loosened up, and I don't feel any more pain. Thank you, Jesus. And the head, I was feeling down, and the cloud lifted. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, come on. You ready to dance tonight? Yeah. Good. Come on. 
And I just want to make sure that everybody that is online, that is watching, that this is also for you. And let the people that are there, I want you to put your hand on your body and start to activate and send a text, connect with us so we can hear what God is doing also with you. You are part of this. You are in the middle of it. So I just want to encourage everyone. Can we just uh, even reach our hands towards the people, towards the camera, all of us here and what God, they, the anointing that is here, these faithful people, every home and every person that is there, we're just releasing the very life and life abundantly that Jesus came to give. Where the enemy came to kill, steal and destroy, Jesus is going to give you life and life more abundantly. So we release more, more, more Lord. Just more, more, more Lord. Fullness, the fullness, the fullness of Jesus. Fill you right now and be healed in the name of Jesus. Be made whole in the name of Jesus. Amen. Ron, what did God do for you? There are two words, uh, there was a word that came for two rotator cuffs, the left shoulder. I'm the second one, so I'm, I believe I got healed. Wow. Wow. Now, who needs a test from God? Oh, wow, really? So you all have a testimony tonight already of healing? Wow, God's moving. Patricia, what are you? I'm also getting that as children of God, we have a right to divine health. Now just imagine this, that you live your whole life, you wake up every day feeling great. Yeah. As your days are, so shall your strength be. You know, cold viruses go through and you, you are just fine. You don't get attacked by any virus, no sickness, no infirmity. How many of you believe that that's your portion if you sit on chair number one? Yeah. Amen. So I just want you to drink deep of that revelation and just receive it right now uh, because that can be your portion. So let's receive it. My son came to me the other night. I'll share this and then we're gonna just, we're gonna worship Jesus. My son came to me and he said he had a bad dream the other night. And he said that there was these dark hands that tried to grab him. And he said, but, uh, but I prayed daddy. In my childlike faith, I prayed and it went away. And then I knew, he said, he said and then I came to you. And, and I said, why did you come to me? And he said, because you're my father and you're my protector. And I just felt like God is restoring. When you said that, Patricia, it just blessed me so much because I just thought of this, like as I was in worship, that God is restoring people's childlike faith. Tonight, God is restoring your childlike faith. There's an innocence in you that the kingdom of heaven wants to restore in you tonight. And as you look at your father in heaven, it will be done so. His promises in you are good in Jesus' name. Let's worship Jesus. River. We come alive in the river. Oh, we come alive in the river.
just thank Him tonight. Thank Jesus tonight. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We thank Him. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Thank you. He worked miracles in the room. Yeshua, amen? Yeshua, he's our beloved. He's our Jesus. 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 Fix your eyes on him tonight and him alone. My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands. And thousands, my beloved, is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands, my beloved, is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands.
overwhelmed right now by the Father's love for you. 
And I just sense him saying, don't strive to get something that you already have. And you have his heart. You have his heart and he has yours. And I was just reading, do not let your heart be troubled. This is Jesus speaking. Believe in God, believe also in me. For in my father's house, in my father's house are many dwelling places. And if it were not so, I would have told you for I go to prepare a place for you. <laughs> you have your own room in the Father's house. You have your own place in his heart that Jesus gave you because he is the way, the truth, and the life. It says, I go and prepare a place for you, and I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. When he says, I'll come again, he was letting his disciples know that he was going to go to the cross, and it might look like he was gone, but he was going to come again. He was going to be resurrected. And he says, in that resurrection, I prepared a place for you in the Father's house. You don't have to think right now, well, you know, when I finish my life and die, then, you know, maybe then I can have the place in the Father's house. You have it right now. You have a place in his heart, a place in his house. And he says, and you know the way where I am going, for I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through me. And if you know me, you know the Father. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And I just feel like there's a number of you who you're just so desperate to be loved by him. You're so desperate to feel like you belong. And You've done everything. You've fasted. You've prayed. You've, you've worshipped for hours. You, you know, you'll go to every meeting possible, you know, to just try to feel that sense of belonging. I know there's many of you in that room, and God's going to break it off of you right now. He's going to break it off of you right now. And if you can relate to that, and I know we're crowded here, but I just feel there's something powerful about coming forward. If you relate to that, come on forward here. And we're just going to sing again that song, Yeshua, because he made the way. He brought us right into the Father's house, the Father's heart. And what he wants you to do tonight is he wants you to see yourself there. He wants you to accept it, that you are there. You don't have to try to get something you already have. He says, I have brought you into the Father's heart. I've brought you into the Father's love. I've brought you in to the Father's house. It's so beautiful, and you belong there. And I want you to close your eyes just for a moment and you know, with that sanctified imagination, I want you to see yourself in the house. I want you to see yourself with the Father. And one of the prayers that I've been praying with all my heart for you since we've been preparing for this weekend is that you would have an encounter where you know the reality, where you know the reality of his love for you and of your belonging to him. And I believe that as you're standing here right now, that a spirit of revelation can fill you where you can see how you belong. That you don't have to strive for something you already have. But he says, just open up your eyes and see, because if you can see it, you can have it. Let's just sing that again or whatever you feel led, Susan. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Be 
dark addiction starts to break To when there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing Your name is life yeah. Break every stronghold You shine through the shadow Burn like a fire I just wanna I just wanna speak the name of Jesus Over fear and all anxiety To every soul held captive by depression I speak Jesus I speak Jesus From the mountains and Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name of Jesus. Shout Jesus! Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus. Straits. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Shout Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name of Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the straits. Jesus in
tonight. Thank you for igniting us tonight with fresh, fresh love, fresh fire, fresh presence, fresh knowing, knowing your love, knowing your ways, knowing your truth. Woo! Give the Lord a big praise. And, wow. Wowie! That's awesome! <laughs> Whoa, how many of you feel a little bit, just a little bit drunk in the Holy Ghost tonight? Wow. I remember a long, long time ago, Saturday nights in the world, and they were sure nothing like this, amen? <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, what an amazing weekend we've had. Wow. Woo! Tonight is, I'm so looking forward to tonight and life to your ministry. And how many of you feel like there's been so much impartation to you already that you know that you'll never be the same again? I mean, you've received nuggets, you've received pure gold in your heart that will establish you in greater understanding of God's love, His presence, the reality of who He is in and through your life. Oh, man, He is, he is so for you. And we have had uh, just the honor of having uh, Leif with us. He could be anywhere, and he chose to come and serve us. And thank you, thank you, thank you. And I want us, how, how many want to see him leave here really, really, really blessed? How many of you would like to see him really, really, really blessed? It says, now I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully, and each one must do just as he has purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion. For God loves, he loves, he loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that always having all sufficiency in everything, 
you may have an abundance for every good deed. And Leif, I just want to say thank you for being such a cheerful giver. You just like, you have just given and given and given by the hour to us and with such joy and you've ignited joy in our own heart. And it says that God's going to make all grace abound to you. All grace is going to abound to you and that you'll have all sufficiency in everything. You are going to have an abundance for every good deed that he calls you to because you're such a cheerful giver. And we're all cheerful givers too, right? If you agree with that, say amen. amen. And it says, Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing. Wow. He got a seed in your hand. It's going to multiply. It's going to increase. And he increases the harvest of your righteousness. And you will be enriched in everything for all liberality, which through us is producing thanksgiving to God. And so we want to really bless uh, Leif this evening. And I just want you to just... Get in touch with the love in your heart or the gratitude in your heart on how you would like to just lavish him tonight. So we're going to receive an offering in honor of Leif's ministry with us this weekend. Um, if you're making out checks, make them payable to um, PKM, Patricia King Ministries. If you're watching online, we especially want to encourage you to give because you have the benefit. You have the benefit of turning your computer on and getting pure gold infused into your heart and it's an honor that we you know to be able to use media uh, to reach the nations of the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ with the love of Jesus Christ and your seed tonight is not only going to bless Leif and his ministry but it is going to speak volumes to the nations not only through Leif's ministry, but even through what's happening this weekend with his ministry over media. The reason that you are here, thousands of you, thousands of you are with us in this room. And we just invite you to extravagantly give, extravagantly give to the advancement of the kingdom. So if you want to uh, give by text, text uh, the letters PKM. To 77977. You can also give by going online or using our um, app, the PKM app, uh, making checks, make them payable to PKM. If you need an envelope, put up your hand and we will get you an envelope. Uh, the ushers will make sure that they serve you in that way and you'll be receipted at the end of the um, uh, year. And I just want to say is that I have known the faithfulness of God in giving. And it's like, it is true what our Father says. Like, he, he blesses us so much. And He actually gives us the seed to sow. He gives us what we need for everything that we do. And I've never, ever been disappointed with seed that I've sowed. Never. It always increases. Always. And as we look over the years of knowing Jesus, it just, you know, our level of blessing, it just keeps escalating. It doesn't go down. It goes up. And I want to especially speak to those of you that are, who society would call the seniors, the seniors of society, is that there is a lie within within culture that says when you get to be a senior, then you start dwindling. You know, you kind of have, have, have hit your peak and now it's time to, to kind of dwindle down. That is so nowhere in the Bible. That is so nowhere in the Bible. And I just want us to defy that and I know that in our ministry, we want to see, we, we just want to see everyone we minister to in that age group escalate in their senior years, advance, increase, do more, be more prosperous at the end of their life. The Bible says so that your latter glory will be greater than the former. Amen? So we're not buying into the lie. We're, we're sowing into a glorious future. And so it's going to be amazing. And we're all going to go because of tonight's seed representing daddy's love. Come on. You know, we're children and heirs of 
all that Jesus came to give us. Wow, we're so blessed. So we're going to give cheerfully tonight. And again, we want to thank you so much, Leif. And Leif is going to be here tomorrow morning at the 1030 service. So join us um, for that service. And uh, uh, for those of you that want to come to service early, we have a nine o'clock service as well. Come on out to that. And uh, we'd love to be able to host you. And uh, for those of you that are watching online, we've got it online for you as well, both services. And so it's our joy to be able to offer that to you. And don't forget to go on uh, patriciaking.com to the events page and find out um, the information that you need to register for Pentecost weekend for the Revival School with Ben and Jody Hughes and Francisco will be there, Robert, myself. It is going to be a blast. And then we're going to have a big wind and fire blowout on, on, on Pentecost Sunday night. It's, it's going to be great. And uh, so you can go and sign up for that online. Wow. Woo, Father, we just bless this offering. We just bless it, bless it, bless it, bless it. We thank you, Lord, that it is fruitful. It is multiplying. It is increasing, not only for that uh, which will bless Leif, but also, Lord God, uh, for the sower of the seed. Just breathe on it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well... Come on, come on up, Leif. Let's give him a big, big welcome. Oh, thank you so much, Leif. Thank you. Testing. Thank you. <clears throat> Testing. One, two, three. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow. I'm going to just uh, take a few moments and just stand and look at you. Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, just wave to me and smile. It really has been a great, great honor to just hang around this family. And, and I, I was sharing with Joe earlier, we got to rest for about 30 minutes. But I was sharing with him that I, mean, I feel so much better Good. than before I came. Good. And it's just, wow. Good. So uh, even being here just feeling refreshed and renewed and also even feel like that I've been able to share things that I normally wouldn't share and I know that that has a lot to do with a level of family that you have here and just the way that you honor because what you honor you have access and according to the level you honor you have access and I know you have a great mama here and mama of the house and I got to meet Papa Ron today and I've been looking so forward to meet him yes and I got to hug on him and love on him and bless him and just, wow, and I've been looking forward to it. Every time I hear his name, I just, there's something in my spirit. And I'm going to contend to see, I remember the first time I saw Parkinson being healed was in Houston, Texas. And I still remember the test when this person couldn't do. And then eventually when he did that and it, the tears that came down on his face and over and over again and the first breakthroughs. And so some of those, uh, wow. So I'm just contending that for all of us, we're going to start to moving into experiencing things that is not common. And so being, a, being in a city, I just thought about, it has nothing to do with my message, but it just I felt this verse that has been kind of a following me, that Jesus came to save that which was lost, Luke 19.10. That we're just in a season that there's things that has been taken from us, things where the thief came to kill, steal, and destroy those areas that Jesus came to save, that which was lost. And I, the, my story, I, I don't know if I shared a story. I can't remember. I've shared so many stories. But in Cambodia, I mentioned where we had seen some of the injustices. And I went up to the north where the Khmer Rouge. And I, I know I shared a little of that. But I don't think I shared a story that we had this mass healing and this reconciliation about 500 people. And I just ministered to first the victims. And it was amazing. And then the victimizer I got to meet with these guys with the tattoos, the Khmer Rouge that was behind the killing. And they just broke my heart and were loving on them. And then uh, I just had this, this I, that verse was with me. Jesus came to save that which was lost. And we had all these mass healings in America. I remember one lady behind me was blind. She got to see and deaf mute got to hear. It was just all these beautiful creative miracles of Jesus because Jesus came to save that which was lost. 
But then we had this testimony time and where people were standing in line and was just sharing about what Jesus has done. But then there was this lady that came up, and this lady just, it was translated into Khmer, and she was just saying, well, uh, I don't know how to read and write. And my translator's translating, and, and he was just trying to describe she doesn't know how to read and write. So, well, I'm saying, well, what, what did Jesus do for you? Because, I mean, this is testimony time. And again, the answer I got back from the translator, she says she doesn't know how to read and write. Okay, but what did Jesus do for her? I mean, like, did something happen? I know she doesn't know how to read and write, but this is healing. And by the third time, I'm kind of getting a little chair two tendency. <laughs> so I'm just like... What, what is going on here? I mean, am I, am I not clear? I try to. And so I said, I, I don't think that she understand. And he says, no, I don't think that you understand. <laughs> you said that Jesus came to save that which was lost. But this lady, what was lost for her, she was one out of many of these people here that don't know how to read and write. Because when the Khmer Rouge came in, if you had any education, they would kill them. So what the parents decided for these small little, and she was a small little child. And so what they did to save her, they kept her from reading and writing. But now they've had this stigma because they never had a chance to read and write. And I just got broken and kind of repented. And so we were there and said, let's get us a Bible. And we got a Bible and we opened up in Khmer. And this is a very difficult language. Open it up and this lady, but the translator said, but she does not know how to read and write. I said, that's okay. Because Jesus came to save that which was lost. And I really captured it. And make the story short, the, this lady, we opened up the Bible. She looked, I, I don't know how to read and write. I said, that's okay. Because Jesus came to save that which was lost. And it just hit me. And we open up. John 3, 16 and 17, she starts to read, the tears flowing yeah. down and supernatural. That night, 85, 85 people that had never learned to read and write started to read supernaturally. Yeah. So I'm just feeling it is an encouragement to us to go back. I'm sensing that there are so many things that was taken from yeah. me. There's been finances, there's been health, it's been things that kind of was lost, but Jesus came to save that which was lost. So I just want to just encourage you, even to making a list, going over there and just yeah, recognize cool. where did the enemy come to kill, steal, and destroy. For me, there's been life quality, there's been vacation, there's been, yep. there's been all these things. So I just felt, make a list of that and then starting to see where the enemy came to kill, steal, and destroy. Make that list. That's where Jesus came to give life and life yeah. more yeah. abundantly. Because Luke 19, 10 says, Jesus came to save those is included, but more than those. That which was lost. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen? So that was little, little of your homework. We watch a little video, and I'm so excited about tonight. <laughs> yeah. Do we have the video for tonight? <laughs> Ambassador of the Love, Dr. Dave McLean. There's Dr. Bob Phillips. Wow. He's totally blind, and she's very, very happy right now because she can see for the first time in her life, and she starts to recognize things. So you can see Jesus is in a good mood here. He could not walk from from where he was him. He could not walk. Doctor, let pray in Jesus' name. And all, all 
Just watch this for a second. Look at the faces. Surrendering to Jesus, Muslim imams in this area, surrender to Jesus. It's so wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's great how the presence is so thick. It's been in a place where the gospel has never been preached before. Just watch the multitudes receiving Jesus. Babshah ko dawa di hai apni zindagi mein. Kitne logo ne dawa di hai ke Yesu Babshah ki zindagi pe raaj kare. Hathro ko leharai. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Could we give Jesus a good hand? Yeah. I had a couple of stories and testimonies I wanted to, that just came to my mind. Uh, that video is actually taken from several different trips. We put it together in 2012. One of the moments when I said just watch it when they were dancing is connected actually to this message I'm going to do tonight. So we'll share a little bit more about that. But uh, there was a group of about 500 and they broke the rope that was about to attack. And then I had remembered the message of tonight that my spiritual father, it's actually his message. And he said, son, you're going to learn how to hold a rod, lay down a rod, pick up a rod. But if you pick it up too early, it's going to be a serpent. Mm. That's going to be the message connected to. But I didn't know there was going to be a need. And then a year later, I am there. And 500 people have less than 30 seconds. And of all of us are going to be killed. I'm standing up on that stage. I had a double pneumonia, 104 and a half in fever. There was all kinds of warfare going on. And these 500 people are just suddenly aggression. Uh, somebody had said something wrong that we had blasphemed, but we hadn't. But they got rage, and they came towards us. And they just kind of hit. And I have a couple of seconds left before the guards will start with mass shooting. And that doesn't look good to be an ambassador of no. love and then slaughter people. Right. But if not, you're going to get killed. So it's kind of a, you're caught between the rock and the hard place. But as they were coming close and close, I looked at the coordinator, and I remember Papa Jack's word to me. So I was just resting. And they were just coming. And it's almost like they hit the soul. When I hit that soul, boom, they just started to dance and worship Jesus. And the faces started to glow and the glory started to hit. The whole masses. And they wouldn't stop. They just danced. In a way, they don't even do in the culture because of the way they dance. But they dance like we do here in the spirit. And that's what you saw on the video. It's just boom, the glory hit that place. And eventually, we end up with 22,400 people saved. But also, another testimony that probably I share with Patricia, that was that video when you saw in the end where the gospel had never been before. Because long story of the warfare that led up to this, but in the end, uh, there was, I was so broken. You saw the people, was, they were crushing the stage. This is where the quadriplegics were walking, the blind eyes. God actually created eyeballs in the front of the Muslims. Uh, one of the girls was just white, then he created in the front, and they were like, and another one was bent over. He was just 15 years had been there, and God, these creative miracles was happening in the front, and they, the people were shocked, but it, people, everybody talked about Jesus, so they went and got their quadriplegia, their blind, and so the first night, I think it was like four, 5,000, the next night, it was like 10, 12,000, and then it was 22,004, it just exploded, and people were coming desperate, never, never been Jesus in that region. So we were just so overwhelmed by what God was doing. But I was so wiped up because they started to throw dead babies. You saw the children on the stage. They started and they were so desperate, just hoping. They didn't know the language. They, but they just thought if they, they saw me praying, or, so they thought I had something to do. And I was trying to say it's Jesus, but they were desperate. And uh, anyway, so I was so, they put us in the car machine guns were having to hit people just to get us into the car because it was crushing us. And we have a vehicle in the front of us. We are in the middle, one behind guards. And they stormed the vehicles. And they just kind of went through the masses, got us out of there. And about less than 24 hours afterwards, I'm in safety. And this has kind of been a six months. So you're just kind of emotionally exhausted and everything else. And in one way, you're just so, you're just so grateful for what Jesus did. But then there was this pain that came over me about 
all the people that had, we didn't get to touch, all the lives that the million and a half, two million people just in that region and here, they, they didn't, I mean, I'm sitting there. So I'm in Marriott Hotel in Islamabad, the capital city of Pakistan, far away from where the event was, sitting there in safety and just sat there with tears and broken heart and I struggled with Papa God. I said, Papa, I don't know if I can handle the pain of all those broken people that you love so much. And then Papa just came in and did something, a nice kiss just for me that kept me going. Because all the way, when you looked on the screen, all the way to the left when you saw over those 20,000 people, there was a father that was holding up the wheelchair. And he put the wheelchair down. Then he took his boy, hold him up. And I saw that through the meeting. So one of the last pictures I saw when the guards took me and started, I paid for another one. They stormed and grabbed hold of my legs and prayed for that one. And as I was leaving, I was trying to point towards this father, just like in desperate, but they're far away. There's no way he could come up to the state. And that's the last thing I did. And we disappeared. So we, sitting in Islam, and they said, well, even after you left, the presence of Jesus just continued to linger. And it was on people who got into the mosque and went into the homes. And, and this is the coordinator 24 hours afterwards. And he said, you do not understand. Let me just share one story, he said. He's telling my translator who told me later. He said, let me tell you one story. There was this father. And throughout the meeting, because he heard about those quadriplegic, and he brought his boy to last night, quadriplegic, hoping that the same Jesus could do for his son what he had just heard had happened to these other quadriplegic. So... So in the middle of it, he said he hold up the wheelchair, but he was so far away, he tried to come up, but the, the multitude was crushing. So he's holding up his wheelchair, hoping that you could touch him or notice him and maybe invite him. And then he put it down, and then he hold up his son, and he wouldn't stop. But then eventually he saw when you left there, his hope was gone, and he just went home with his boy in the wheelchair, put him down on the mat, and his boy was on the mat, and the father was just very disappointed. The little hope that he had was gone. But throughout that night, the presence of Jesus just lingered on his boy. <laughs> and this tingling thing has been happening with a boy. And throughout the night, the presence of Jesus just continued on his boy. And this little boy starts to get feelings where he's never had feelings. And then strength where he didn't have strength. And by the morning, the little boy stands up. And he walks into the kitchen. <laughs> and he hugs his father. <laughs> and... Uh, And it's probably my favorite of all time miracles. I've seen a lot. Because usually the darker places you go, the greater the light comes through. So there's a high, high price. But uh, I don't know if we have the three cheers today. Or we, yeah. Can we get yeah, just uh, Not because we're going to directly use them, but I want you to see pretty much everything we do, I still want us to get used to the cheers. Yeah. So that our mentally. Are you guys okay? Yeah. Wow. While we do that, let's open up our Bibles to Joshua. We're going to look at two different places, but Joshua. I'm crying, so I can't see. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> let's look at Joshua chapter 21, verse, wow, starting in verse 43. Joshua chapter 21, verse 43. So the Lord gave to Israel all the land. Say all the land. All the land. How much of the land? All. Okay. Which he had sworn to give to their fathers. And they took possessions of it and they dwelled in it. The Lord gave them rest. Say rest. rest. All around according to, say all, all. That he had sworn to their fathers. All that he had sworn to their fathers. And not the man, not the man of their enemies was able to stand against them. And the Lord delivered all. Say all. all. The Lord delivered, say all. all. All their enemies into their hand. Not the word fail. Not of any good thing which the Lord has spoken of the house of Israel. And I want you to see. Say all came to pass. All came to pass. Say all came to pass. Came How many would like to see this? In your life. Yes. 
that every single promise and prophetic words over your life, that you're entering into your chair, number one, your promised land for you, your family, for the community, for your city, for your nation, where you are actually experiencing where there is that rest that is all around. When none, this is the two scriptures that makes me jealous in the Old Testament. This is one of them, and I mentioned earlier 1 Kings 5, 4, where there was also a chair number one for seven-year period of time. Israel got the experience in this. Seven years. And the promised land is not when you go to heaven, because there were seven, there was seven nations that they had to conquer in chair number one to get chair number one. And there was 31 battles, and there was all these things before they experienced what we just read here. So I started with the end in itself. And uh, how many of you are ready for an upgrade. Yeah. And I do simply believe we're going to prophetically, and this is going to be an, uh, uh, oh, I'm slowing down. <clears throat> I, just, I just get excited. <laughs> holy, holy, holy spirit. <laughs> My papa, Papa Jack Taylor, and I was playing it for Joe. The last words that I spoke to him before he died at first, he was not able to talk. It was, they saying, you're not going to be able to connect. The doctors were telling him, Frida says, Leif, don't be disappointed. And Friday, when I first went in, the first part in the morning, and I tried to connect with Pop, and you had some sound, but it was not the connection. And my heart was broken because uh, he was the last one that prayed for me before I went to Pakistan. We talked when we were there, and, and I felt the Lord had waited at least. I thought... We're going to get him back again. So I thought he was going to live and not die. And I was fighting for my papa. But that Friday afternoon, I had another 30 minutes. I was able to go into the hospital. And I kissing my papa and loving on my papa. And I, papa, 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 Jack. And, and as I was doing that, uh, papa looked at me and said, Son, son, uh, welcome back. I've been praying for you. Mm. And then... Uh, I said, Papa, Papa, what is your favorite Bible story? What is your favorite message? And he said, M M Moses and the rod, lay it down. And that was the last words. Tomorrow, it will be two weeks. At 3.10 in the morning, he passed away. So, are you guys ready? Yes. How many here would like to join me in the school of radiology? <laughs> I was actually in Canada, and I was doing a teaching in Canada. Our friend John Arnott was there, Benny Hinn, and a few other ones. And the leaders of this conference, they were just saying that, uh, hey, uh, I want you to meet this famous doctor in Canada. He's sitting by the side of you. And, and, and so just make sure you introduce yourself. And I thought, wow, that's very nice. I introduced myself. And he said, I'm Dr. So-and-so. And I said, well, I'm Dr. Leif Hetland. And he kind of like, okay, uh, what kind of a doctor are you? And he told me what doctor he was. And he said, what kind of a doctor are you? And I said, I'm a doctor in radiology. <laughs> He didn't know I was going to speak about the rod. <laughs> he said, I mean, he thought maybe I'm Norwegian and have an accent or something. I mean, radiology. I said, radiology. <laughs> and I didn't say a whole lot more before. <laughs> the logic of the rod. You have theology, the logic of Theo and God, and but this was... So anyway, so when I came up there, it was just this very... <laughs> there was this very precious, precious moment. But pretty much the, what I want us to see today... And coming in, I know this is a very significant event, but it's going to be more prophetic, prophetic activation. I believe it's going to be one of those, like, as much important as the chairs are. This is what, what I'm doing. This is in the honor of Papa Jack. It is his one that was a life message. One that people come to me and said, oh, I heard Papa Jack 50 years ago doing the rod message changed my life. Or somebody mm. else said 30 years ago, it was the message that when I went into the treatment center, mm. And Papa Jack said, that's when he first said it. He said, son, you're going to learn how to hold a rod, lay down a rod, and pick up a rod. But if you pick it up too early, it's going to be a serpent. Wow. I didn't understand that at the time before I was in the treatment center. And the first season I had to just lay down, lay down, lay down, everything lay down until there was nothing left to lay down. Mm. And then later on I had to learn how to wait until I had the instruction to pick it up. 
so that was the first time. But over the years, I had several encounters, and I started to teach it. And Papa, I remember he was so proud of me in Colorado. I was doing his rod message. He was sitting on the front row, and he, he said it in a beautiful way, son. I mean, this is so much better than what I have ever done. And it was just this proud father, and, and he just did something for me as a son. And, but I knew that when the last words he said about that, I wanted to bring a rod with me here for you today. So let me give you kind of a diversion of this message. Let's go back again, and God's people were supposed to be head and not tail. They were supposed to be above and not beneath. But what has happened because of the disobedience of God's people, there you're seeing 800,000 men plus women and children. About 3 million Jews has ended up for 400 years in chair number 3 in slavery. And God, the God of the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had had enough, and he... The cry of the father is, I, I want my family back. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, it's so painful to watch my people being slavery in Egypt and being in the bondage of Egypt because God had a chair number one for them. He had a promised land. So what God decided to do, but when the enemy is picked it up that God was about to do something, guess what the enemy was doing? The enemy is picking up, and he goes to Pharaoh and says, Pharaoh, we got this problem, this situation. So the enemy was whispering into Pharaoh, let's kill all the baby boys because there's going to come a person, and you need to stop it, that is going to kind of mess you up here in Egypt. And somehow Pharaoh got this idea, Lucifer was behind because he was picking up that God was about to do something. And I'm just saying that even in regard to prophetically speaking, if you recognize what the enemy is doing, I can also connect it to what God is doing. We see a lot of division because God is about to bring a unity like we've never seen before. Right. We see a lot of the racial tension is connected to what Papa is doing with his family. So just recognize the attack on family and identity on marriage is because the opposite is about to take place. Yeah. And I want you to capture that where the enemy has bitten you is actually where you have the greatest authority. Mm. So where the serpent has bitten you is where you have authority. Yeah. So this is kind of the setting up the stage for this. So here there are three million. So but, but it's here sometimes, Joe, you need to hold this rod for a few moments. I just. <laughs> oh. So here we have this amazing picture where, wow, Pharaoh, he starts his mass slaughter. And, and when Miriam recognized why they're coming for my little baby boy, Moses, she put the little boy in the Nile and the boy floats down the Nile. And the enemy wants to kill destiny. And I believe abortion, this is what's taking place. The enemy knows that there is a generation of forerunners with a forerunner spirit to prepare the prepares of the preparation of what's to come. And he's trying to stop destiny. And I think that this is what we talked about earlier. We do not attack people. There's a spirit realm that is behind this. And that's what we need to stop the spirit realm. And this is what was taking place here. They're trying to stop destiny. The enemy knows that God is up to doing, so he's killing the baby boys. He knows Jesus is coming, so he's trying to kill the baby boys. You see this pattern over and over in history. So this boy is floating down the Nile, and dear, guess what? There is a princess. She is bathing, and look at, wow, baby boy. She picks up the baby boy, and she takes him home. Guess where she takes him? The Pharaoh. Pharaoh suddenly get an adopted little Jewish boy. <laughs> the very one that he wants to kill. Sometimes, let me just say, sometimes I feel sorry for the devil. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm in chair number one, so I was like, oh, Lucifer. I sometimes want to pray for you, Lucifer. But <laughs> sometimes I just feel sorry because it seems like it's like every time you start to kill me, it just leads to upgrade. The video earlier, 200 Christian homes and 80... No, you've not seen that video yet. But they burned down 200 Christian homes and 80 businesses. And the byproduct that we got 87,000 new names into the Lamb's Book of Life. So if the enemy didn't kill our family over there, we wouldn't have gone in and got the stadium to fill it. So every time there's an attack of the enemy, we go in the opposite spirit. And anyway, so, so this is what's taking place. So here it is. Just Can we just... For a moment, think there is Satan himself. He goes into Pharaoh. There is the baby boy. And guess what? The very one that he's trying to kill and stop. Now, Pharaoh has to pay for the diaper bill. Mm. <laughs> mm. Pharaoh pays for the education. So here is Moses 
40 years, 40 years in the school of Pharaoh. He learns everything there is about the kingdom of darkness. All there is about the world system. He knows the philosophy. He knows the psychology. He knows the economy. He knows everything there is to know about Egypt and the world system. So after 40 years in the school of Egypt, Moses is there. But he can identify his people. He knows on the inside mm. there's something different with me. And he can identify. In one moment, he see one Egyptian that is up. So his first day of ordination, this is wisdom. Them. First day of your ordination, don't kill anybody. <laughs> it's just... The first day of his ordination, he sees there's an Egyptian out there mistreating some of his family, and there's something of that justice element in him, and so he kills the Egyptian. The next day, two of his brothers, so he was kind of a not uh, a, a true Egyptian, but it was not part of his own family. He was trying to figure who he was. And then the next day, two of his brothers of fighting, and he said, are you going to do to us what you did to the Egyptian? And the journey starts. Fear came in, and the next moment, Moses goes into the wilderness, and he is in that wilderness, wilderness, wilderness. Some of you have just had the last 14, 15, 18 months of wilderness. Congratulations. Your upgrade is about to be confirmed. So, welcome to the school of radiology. Moses, Moses, if I were to interview Moses, the first 40 years of his life, I mean, he, he is clear. He had incredible confidence. He has courage. He has strength. He has everything that you need. He has knowledge. He has wisdom. He has everything that you need to be qualified. So it takes him 40 years to get qualified. But now it's going to take him another 40 years mm. to get disqualified. <laughs> and that's how you become qualified. <laughs> Welcome to the school of radiology. <laughs> it took him 40 years to get him out of Egypt, but it took another 40 years to get Egypt out of him. And when he couldn't do anything any longer, here he is out. If you say, Moses, who are you? <laughs> I, I, I'm a shepherd. Oh, yeah, okay, you're a shepherd. Yeah, what, what do you do? Take care of sheep. And by the way, got this rod and protects the sheep. And one time a hand was coming and I attacked it with rod and I carved on this rod all kinds of nice things here. I mean, this has been with me for 40 years. If you look at this rod, it tells you who I am. Shepherd, shepherd's rod. Oh, wonderful, Moses. And then so this God comes in and says, now we are going to begin this journey together because I have a calling on your life. And that calling is, I want you going into chair number three, into the kingdom of darkness. I have about 800,000 of my people. That is just the men, plus the women and the children. So there's about three million of them. I want you to take them out of Egypt. They're all slaves, slave mentality. And I give you a simple little assignment. You take three million of them. Mm out of Egypt, and you're going to take him through chair number two, the wilderness, and all the way into chair number one, into the promised land, so they can experience a place where there's rest on all sides, no adversary, where they no longer have any slave mentality, and they are totally free. <laughs> <sighs> and Moses, there's five excuses, but, 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 but God, you... <laughs> uh, there's somebody... Uh... Have you ever been there? I've been there. <laughs> So anyway, so we're about to start the school, and then we know you have a burning bush experience. And then eventually comes to the point with his excuses, the five primary, and he tells God who he is not and what he's not able to do. And then finally God has enough. And, and then finally God says, I, I do want you to go. And he said, but, but, what, 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 what do I tell Pharaoh or what do I tell the, the two, two, three million people? Well, <clears throat> just tell them that I am have sent you. I am that I am. But, 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 but God, that's not good grammar. <laughs> that's what I would think as a Norwegian. I'm going to Pakistan telling the Pharaoh, I am have sent me. <laughs> God. But when you capture I am that I am, this is Exodus 3. I'm just taking you into where we're going. If you capture that, it changes everything. I am. I am your healer. I am your strength. I am your authority. I am your joy. I am your freedom. I am, I am, I am. I am your presence. 
I am your peace. Whatever you need, I am that I am. That's a covenant name. Yep. And it is a covenant keeping God. And there is no longer an excuse for any one of us when we enter into that covenant. At that moment, it should be over. Wow. Because when you capture the I am, the only response back is, you are. You are. And the world around will say, he is. He is. He is. Say, I am. I am. You are. You are. He, is. he is. Okay, are you ready? Open up your Bible, Exodus chapter 4, verse 1 through 5. And then we're going to read verse 17 and 20. That was extra generosity. I thought about only giving you five extra verses, but I'm going to give you two bonus verses. Wow. And I'm very generous today. I just... Because of all the life you have given me. And because of this beautiful hunger level in this room. Are you guys okay? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, beautiful. So Exodus 4. That then, then Moses answered and said, But suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say, The Lord has not appeared to you. So, this is verse 2. So the Lord... Exodus 4, 2. And so the Lord said to him, say that with me, what is that in your hand? Let's say that again. What is that in your hand? One more time. What is that in your hand? Very good. He said, a, a rod, a rod. And he said, cast it to the ground. So he cast it to the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from it. Then the Lord said to Moses, Reach out your hand and take it by the tail. And he reached out his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. So that they may believe that the Lord God of the fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. Verse 17. And then the Bible says, and you shall take this rod in your hand in which you shall do signs. And verse 20, and Moses took the rod of God in his hand. Are you guys ready to start? So here we are. What do you have in your hand? <gasps> I got a rod. Well, what kind of a rod? Well, I got the ministry. I got, God, you do not understand. I have global mission awareness and we're all over the world and we have a budget and we have staff and we have all those different things. Excuse me, but is it your ministry or my ministry? Is that your church or my church? Or is that your business or which business? What do you have in your hand? Well, I got four kids to feed and oh, okay. What else do you have? What do you have in your hand? God, and I went through this process several times with Papa Jack. There's times I've had burdens. I was going to the nation. He said, what do you have in your hand? Say that with me. What do you have in your hand? And this time personalizes, what, what do I have in my hand? And Moses says, well, I, I, I got a rod. This is your identity. This is my protection. This is my retirement. This is everything in this rod. I mean, everything is... This is how I build my, all these years, God, you gave this to me. And Moses, I want you to lay it down. Mm. Well, God, but, but don't you understand? I mean, 40 years in the wilderness has been carved. Identity, protection, retirement, it's everything. I, God, lay it down. God. And this is a daily thing. I travel with this rod. And I'm giving to a lady named Katie Susan. Katie Susan. You're watching here today. I didn't know I was going to do that before the lunch table today. I carry this for myself and I put, come to me, all of you are weary and heavy laden. And I will give you rest that's carved on here. Come, lay down your burdens, your pressure. And you're going to learn to pick up his pleasure. Mm. What do you have? Well, I got chronic pain. I got this stage four cancer. I have all this treatment. I have this diagnosis. I have. What do you have in your hand? Lay it down. Mm. But this has become my identity, become my crutch. But we know the Bible says when he laid it down, what did it become? Snake. It became a snake. Listen, 
you do not know if there's any serpentine or serpent nature in what God has given you until you wow. lay it down. Let me say another statement. <laughs> Are you guys okay? Yeah. Yeah. You do not know I have a ministry. Well, what ministry? I have this, I have that. Until I become free from it, I cannot be entrusted with it. Mm. Yes. And that's very easy. And the bigger it becomes, the harder it is to lay down. Mm. But until in this season, I really do believe that this is what God is doing with all of us. To lay down ours so we can pick up His. But I want you to capture, here's the second point, so we don't make this pointless. <laughs> when he laid down that, it became what? A? And all the, look at me, and all the hiss went out, so that all of his oh. could go in. <laughs> Two more times. All the hiss of the serpent went out when all of his went in. All the s of the serpent went out, so all of his mm. could go in. All the pressure moved out, so that all of the pleasure could go in. Mm. All the fear moves out, so the perfect love goes in. Before cancer was a problem, now it is a promise. Before that prodigal son was your problem, but now you have laid down that, and God is working because you have consecrated it to the I am that I am. And then he says, do you see that rod? Yes, God, it's not a rod, it's a serpent. <laughs> I want you to pick it up, but, but, but God, it's serpent. I'm Norwegian, I don't know much about snakes. I know we have some Aussies around, but when I was in Australia, they took me to a place where they showed me eight out of the 10 most poisonous yeah. serpents in the world are in Australia. And so when I was in Australia, but I don't like serpent snakes. I'm not very good with snakes, but I've watched some television programs. I've seen some snakes, but when I watch television, if they told me you need to pick up a serpent, what I would, I don't even remember if serpents yeah. have ears, do they? <laughs> but if they had ears, I would pick my yeah. fingers behind the ears so the business end wouldn't be loose. That's, right. That's what I would do. But God says, I want you to pick it up after the tail. Mm. But do you know what happened? If I pick that up after the tail, yeah. guess what's going to happen? Yeah. Yep. Moses says, why the tail? And eventually we know when he touched that tail, it becomes a rod. But it becomes God's rod. God's ability. God's power. God's authority. God's wisdom. God's perfect love. And as long as you're holding up God's rod, light will penetrate darkness. Love will penetrate fear. And now he is about to start. He goes to Egypt. Well, we know a long story, but let's go into the short version. Three million Jews, and he, they start marching. This is exciting. We're going to head to the promised land. But it doesn't take a long time. It's like herding three million cats. <laughs> yeah, right. They have a slave mentality. They are whining like slaves. They are used to thinking like slaves. They, I mean, it's cheering up, but they, they lived in slavery for 400 years, generation after generation, and they are fighting each other. And then they start to complain when they're getting into this wilderness. We want to go back to Egypt, and it's better than this. And Moses, he's getting so tired, report after report. If you feel pastoring is very hard, talk to Moses. Right. <laughs> Three million. So Moses have had enough and finally has his day. He's like, God! That's the prayer meeting. God! <laughs> I don't know if you've been there. I've been there several years. God! I have this problem. Those three million people are whining and complaining and bye-biting and sheep bites and the nipple cut. It's like not even bleeding. It's just hurting. <laughs> And I can hear God say, excuse me, Moses, uh, what is the problem? God, I just, excuse me, what is the problem? Oh, God, don't you not hear me? I'm just three million and everything else. I'm going to go on and then go back to you. I'm going to go What is the problem? <laughs> Moses, what do you have in your hand? I got a rod. Ah, you got a rod. What kind of a rod is it? See, chair two. Chair two. 
uh, he's in Chertu right now, sir. So then suddenly, hmm. I got a rod. I got God's rod. Yeah. I got your power. I got your presence. I got your promises. I got your authority. I got your joy. I got your freedom. I got you. Yeah. Moses, what's the problem? God, I don't have a problem. You have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> you know those three million people of yours? <laughs> what are you going to do about it? I wish it was over. That's just the beginning in the school of radiology. Yeah. Let's come into the next round. Are you ready for round two? Oh, no. <gasps> oh God! Don't talk about a rod. No radiology talk. We have another problem, and this is bigger than the first problem because I just got the news. Somebody just tweeted me and told me, and then somebody put it on Facebook and it's on Instagram. It's all over the place. Pharaoh is ticked. <laughs> He's in a mood swing. He has forgotten and he's coming with his whole army. Army and in the front of us, Red Sea. <laughs> when I read this story, I've been there many times. Caught between the rock and the hard place. Got this diagnosis. There's nothing I can do. The tumor. First it was double pneumonia and I'm so weak. And then it is the tumor. And eight days before I'm dying... Gonna have a major surgery, just getting lost 46 pounds. Mm. So many stories and stories, it didn't matter which direction I go, I am stuck in the middle of it. We don't have the time. Red uh, Army, Red Sea, God! Prayer meeting. <laughs> and then, what do you have in your hand? <gasps> God, I told you. Chair one. I got a rod. I got you a rod. I got your peace. I got your presence. I got your promises. I got your authority. I got you. The I am that I am is with me. So what are we going to do about it? Red Sea opens up. All the army of Pharaoh has been swallowing up. As three million people just walked through. The Red Sea. I feel we are moving into a season with God's people. Every one of us is going to learn how to use God's authority. But before we can get there, we have to lay down ours to pick yeah. up His. And we need to get all the His out so that all of His can come in. Yeah. And the upgrade is weak, and as we're laying down our fear, our shame, our guilt, we're laying down our sins, we're laying down everything, the best that we can do, including our. This very seldom, it's only four times I've done it, but I just heard the Holy Spirit, the last impartation tonight. But there's about four or five activations we're doing with this rod. Are you guys okay? Yeah. But because I just got the, the, from my wife, to my children, to the ministry, to the business, to the finances, to my health, to everything else. It's been an ongoing thing. That's why I travel with this rod. I can take it apart in a few moments, put it in the bag, and then suddenly when I'm going into the room and I'm standing there and I get news everywhere, they're burning down the Christian homes and everything else, and I'm in my hotel room and there's nothing I can do. And then I say, what do you have in your hand? Right now I'm being overwhelmed at all the different sides. And it brings me in. I lay that down. I lay down the best that I can do for God. Because you don't do things for God, but from God. Yeah. And then in my room, I'm holding up. I got your presence. I got your peace. I got your promise. That's the declaration of Patricia King. And it starts to clear everything that he has said over me, over this place. And I start to hold up the rod of God. Yeah. And the next moment, then I face my Red Sea, the army. I face whatever I have to face. The last picture here, I'm just very short because I would spend, I know I've done a lot of talking and teaching, but I wanted to do some more activation. So this is just five more minutes. But the third picture here, and I want us to capture that. There's no longer enough for you to have God's rod. And you need to do God's rod, God's way with God's power. and God's, That's not enough in this season. There was a season for that. There is no superstars in the kingdom, only sons and daughters. There are superheroes, and that's all of his family yeah. of sons and daughters. But I want us to capture this because in this season, and it's what I'm sensing you're doing for me, and you didn't know it. Mm. But what you're doing is you're helping me in this season of grief as I lay down. 
everything I've done for 22 years, and I have to wait to pick up the next mantle for the next season. And in the middle of it, you have been there and helping me to refresh. As an eagle sitting on the rock waiting for the feathers to fall up and a vision to do everything. And you've been putting a little fresh meat and, hey, don't give up. Like, it's got to be good. And I've been here with you. I'm sensing the life that's coming back. I'm not yet where I'm supposed to be, but I have left that last. I've already laid down the previous season. And I'm in a waiting period and letting all the hiss go out of the previous season so that all of the hiss can come in for the next season. Yeah. I don't know if you're getting it. Yeah. Is it getting you? Yeah. So here we are in the next part of this, and that is I realize, and that's part of the reason I'm coming here when Patricia King is here. I'm coming here to say, let me come and hold up the rod of God for you. I love the rod of God for Ron. I wanted to come in and say, let me hold up. I, I know there's a lot of orphans around and your mama to gather him in and you want to see the family free. Let's see this healthy kingdom family that is here and, and the other families that is watching online and all over. And I just believe that all over there's going to be this transformation this weekend. That's one of the reasons I was supposed to be mourning and there's, as Patricia said, many places I could be. But I'm so grateful I'm here. It's a very safe place to be with you. And you're honoring well, you're loving well. But I also believe my assignment was to help you to get in and find your place home to your promised land. Where there's rest all around. Where the enemy, all the enemies that has been against you is not going to be able to operate any longer. What you are finding, and Patricia prophesied over me a little earlier, a similar word for me, so it's a word for me also. You're suddenly coming above the snake line as an eagle, and don't have to be dealing with this any longer. But you're moving there. But on the journey there, you're going to have the rod of God. No longer the old identity with a shepherd, chair two. But he's giving you a new rod for this new season. You're laying down the orphan identity. You're picking up sonship. You're laying down the Jacob. You're picking up the Israel. Are you, are you with me? So the last picture that I saw there, Moses now, even doing God's work, God's way, with God's power, with God's presence, his arm is getting tired. And that's what I feel with a lot of us in this season. This is the picture for this season. Our arms, and I know Marcella beautifully have done, and I know that also I watched these two amazing sons looking at Mama while she was praying. And I just looked over, I went over to them, I said, I see your faces looking at Mama. And it did something for me. It does. Because I know, I can know there's the eyes of sun, sunglasses. <laughs> and they can look into the sun. Yeah. And I know when people don't have an agenda. I know when the sonship is the most beautiful ship in the world, or the daughter ship. But we're going to come in this season where, first of all, and I'm realizing my arms is getting tired and it is not enough for me in this season to try to use more strength to hold up the rod of God and hold up the promises and do everything. It's not going to be enough. I'm coming and saying, Patricia, can you help me? Can you guys, can this family help me in this season and helping us in this season? And other ones are coming in and then we're doing that with one another. This is the way God is setting it up. And so when Moses' arms started to get tired, you got an Aaron and a her, and we're coming with Robert and say, come. And this is also, Robert, tonight we're going to hold up the rod of God. You've been fighting, you've been standing, you've been declaring, you've been doing, but we're going to hold up the rod of God. And we hold, as long as we're holding up the rod of God, we're holding up his promises, we're holding up his presence, we're holding up him then light is going to penetrate to darkness. Yes. But what is happening, we're arms getting tired, and then we're getting new waves and new reports and new... So that's what God is showing, and I'm coming and saying, let me hold up the rod of God for you, over your health, over your finances. Let's lay down that pressure. Let's pick up His pleasure. Let's lay down that shame. Let's pick up His glory. Are you okay? Yes. Our family, our children, it all belongs to Him. You can trust Him. He's trustworthy. He's a good, good papa. And the place of surrender is the place of exchange. So the second picture that I've seen for us that we're going to do tonight, and then that is a, this is the family coming around each other. You're not alone any longer. You're not a lone ranger in this. You are here part of a family, and you're not alone carrying your burden along. There's people coming alongside you and say, hey, let me hold up. That ministry. Let me hold up that. Let's lay down your church. Let's pick up his church. 
Let him build his church so the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Let's stop trying to build it and let's start to extend it and express it and live it out. Are you okay? And then the last picture here. Actually, let's stand to our feet and let's start. Wow. Uh, I believe with all of my heart that what we're seeing now in the wilderness, the church, we may be left Egypt, but what God is doing in this season is getting Egypt out of us. And I didn't realize there's still some of that Egypt system in me. And that's what I've noticed these days. There's still some of that. And this is part of his beautiful pleasure that he doesn't want any of that Egypt with us into the next season. And some of that Egypt, the worship team, yes, please. So the first I want you to do right now, can we just invite the Holy Spirit to come? And I want you just to hold out your hands. Just imagine that you have a rod and whew, just relax with it so your arms doesn't get tired because then I have to come and hold up the rod for you. <laughs> so just relax with your hands. And the question that I have, uh, what do you have in your hand? What is heavy on you? What is burdening you? Is there any person in your life? Is there any health condition? When you look in the mirror, what do you see? When you go to bed, it's there. You wake up in the morning, it's there. It's weighing on you. Finances? Future? Is the past coming with you? What do you have in your hand? And Holy Spirit, now I know it's different from each person. I know I have one person in my life, in my own family, that you just dropped in my spirit right now, as I said it. It's going to come from you. And I just feel, you know, Holy Spirit told me to lay that person down, meaning let me take care of that person. Just did this not long ago. We were in Castle Rock, Colorado, and, and when I had just shared, somebody would just talked about the prodigal sons and daughters need to come home. And supernaturally, when we laid under rod, already by then God knew, send one of the boys that's been on methamphetamine and had been away bipolar. Mama sitting there third year, just laid on her boy, hadn't seen him in a long time. The boy's walking up to the third row into the church, comes to Mama and gives his life to Jesus. I just believe that when we are in a season when we are just laying down something and trust God with it, that doesn't mean we are not going to do anything. We are going to pick up what is ours. But at this very moment, hold in your hand. Can you say yes if you have something in your hand? Can you say yes? Yes. So Holy Spirit, just be clear. Fear? Guilt? Chronic pain? Forgiving yourself. Wow. Forgiving you. I just heard that. Whew. So at this very moment, I'm going to count to three. You're going to take a little step back, and then you're going to trust him. And you're going to lay down your burden. You're going to lay down your pressure. You're going to lay down your pain. Whatever you have. One. And the people online, I want you to hold out the hands. Be clear in the living rooms where you're at. Whew. One, two, three. Lay down and step a little back. Just hold your hands for a second and start to thank him. Just pray in the spirit a little bit. All that is going out. All that is going out. The cancer is going out. The chronic pain is going out. The pressure is going out. Whoa! It's no longer your car. It is his car. It's no longer your church. It is his church. It is his ministry. Sss goes out and his comes in. And at this very moment, we're going to count to three. And then we're going to pick up. It is no longer going to be your rod. It's going to be God's rod. One, 
two, three, from the lesser end, the tail. So you always hold it lightly. And let's hold it up. And can we just for a few moments say we thank you? Say thank you. I thank you for your presence. Say thank you for your presence. Thank you for your peace, for your healing, for your freedom, for provision. Thank you that the I am that I am, the I am that I am, covenant keeping God, a loving Father that takes care of his sons and daughters. Whew. Holy, holy, holy. At this next moment, I want us just to do a little prophetic sign. Put your hands to somebody else around the sleeves and hold up the help to hold up the rod somebody else's rod and this is just us as a sign just a family holding up you're holding up somebody else and again it's going to just be a sign for a few moments and Joe <laughs> this is you activate you need <laughs> so Father just even at this moment we're just coming together here and even over Ron at this moment, we just, oh, even at this moment, let him just sense. We're holding him up. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. So. Whoa, Baba. Whoa. Whoa, Baba. Whoa. Robert, we just need a whole couple of people come around. Can we just, even at this moment, just lean your hands towards Robert. Let's yeah. stand together as a family. If the enemy attacks one of us, he attacks all of us. We are family. And Robert, we're standing with you. It's my brother. We're in covenant at one. I remember the very day when I had my tumor. And eight days before, the family came around me. My Filipino, they came. And they were holding up my rod of God eight days before my surgery. And by the time my surgery came there, they kept me open. But my tumor shrank one inch, and it changed nature. And I still have the scar as a reminder that the family came together, and they were holding up the rod of God, and the environment changed. So I think that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So over Robert right now, we're just coming in over your wife, your family. Wow! Baba! Baba! Wow! I know we're going to go into ministry and wow, but one more thing. This is why I said I hadn't planned. Whoa, there's something holy taking place now. There's very seldom, but it's just, just, just watch me for a moment. But it's something for people online also. But I saw, and this is where I felt in for my life at this moment. That is when your life is becoming God's rod. And you're willing to lay down your life. And all that goes out. And all of his comes in. Like my friend Randy Clark says, that you then become a little coin in his hand. And he can spend you in whatever way he wants to. And I'm just sensing that even now, this is not a simple, just a cheap. This is a very holy, holy, holy message. But I'm just sensing that whatever age, whatever is the hindrance, whatever excuses, whatever is holding you back, there's going to be a beautiful, beautiful worship. But if that is you, if you're just sensing, and as people online, maybe you just take some step into another room, but I just sense it, change where you're at. But I want us to come together. If you're sensing, I'm willing to, and I'm in a season where I've done it before, and I've done it before, and there's something in me that's just sensing that to some degree, I know I can be where I'm at and I can enjoy all those benefits, but it seems like where he wants to take me next, I have to go down before I go up. And that's not, I can enjoy where I'm at right now. I could have a good life, I have a good home, blessed with everything you can, I have a great minute. We've never been better in every area. And then I sense an invitation right now. It's just to lay down everything again, not have any, any agenda, 
lay it on the ministry, lay it on the blessing, lay it on everything that we have, and just lay it on, but lay it on my life and say, here I am, 55 years old, everything that I have, but I trust you with my life. And you can do with me, you can do with everything else, but it's no longer my money, it is your money. It's no longer my family, it is your family. Everything belongs to you. And for somebody, I really feel this is going to be a key to what he's going to do into the future. Free people. They're just allowing the hiss. And I don't even know what that hiss is. If there is any hiss, you don't know until you lay down. And I saw even for some of you, it was just that Isaac that was there that you had to come to the point where you were willing to. And he didn't need your Isaac, he needed you. So even if he says something, continue to listen because faith comes from hearing, not having heard. So Holy, Holy Spirit. Holy, Holy, Holy Spirit. To just come, maybe you lay down, but just come because we're going to soak. Maybe just you lay down, but all I do is want to present myself as a living sacrifice you can maybe come up front if you're sensing it but I just sense and take some steps we're going to soak and we're going to minister but just make room it is just or kneel down where you're at but I just sensing that if you're sensing that's me and I just I'm just going to trust you with my life whatever is from the past that's from the past we're going to bury that in Egypt we're no longer going to stay in Egypt we're going to come home we're going to go into the promised land together as a family People, I just encourage you, if you're on the line and watching, find a place on the floor and just lay yourself down. You're not alone in this. We're all laid on lovers. We're all people that are just making herself available. And now I'm just seeing, it's like I'm seeing the Father just saying that when all of us are going to be rods in His hand, it's going to be amazing what He's doing with our lives. When we are in the Father's hand and we're trusting ourselves totally, we're trusting our voice, we're trusting our talents, we're trusting our prophecy, we're trusting everything, and we're allowing that hiss to go out so all of his can fill you up right now. So from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet, I just, whoa, that, I just bless. Whoa, there you are. There's holy fire right now. I'm just seeing this all... These altars, altars. We're just placing our lives on that altar and say, here I am. If you can take this Norwegian, I may be not the best. I know that the reason you're using me where I'm at is not. It's just because I make myself available. If there's nobody else to go, here I am. So Father, I just release over us right now. More. No more. No more. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
There's fire burning on the altar, right? There's fire here. The fire. You fire. This is your role, Father. Fire on the altar.
Come alive. 